All right, done about got dark on me, but here you go. Uh, got the what, what's considered a D-cup valve or slide valve out. Uh, my only worry is the surface of this, and we'll clean it up. And if it's not good enough, we'll. Uh, I think we can unbolt that cylinder. Yeah, we can unbolt the cylinder and take the cylinder in and set it up on the milling machine, and we'll remill the surface in there if we have to. Now this will be easy here because I can set it up and clean it up real good and use the surface grinder on it. So we'll get that taken care of. Uh, rod, we're going to have to make that. It looks like this one might have been nickel or chrome plated. Uh, but either way, we'll do it again. Uh, I probably have some rod that size that's already plated. So Anyway, that's all we're going to do for the night. Okay, folks, uh, day two of engine 602, and the uh, crank don't look too bad. I, I think we can just, you know, get it cleaned up, and uh, we'll end up reshimming all the bearings and everything. I went ahead and cleaned this side up and just stuck it back on. And, uh, all right, a couple things. Uh, some of you may or may not find interesting, but so this is a 10-horse Sears and Roebuck. And if you do all the measurements, in other words, the sales brochure for Sears and Roebuck has crank diameter, uh, pulley diameter, pulley size, uh, bore stroke. They've got all the information and including the port sizes of the exhaust port and the intake port. So it's pretty easy to recognize one of these engines because everything on it will actually match up exactly perfect. And this engine exactly matched up perfect for the 10 horsepower. So the red engine matched up as a four horsepower and the little green engine I've got matched up as a one and a half horsepower. But here's the issue. They all look like they were built by different manufacturers and the red engine, the four horse, has got some uh, stuff on it that makes it seem as if it was made by a different company other than the Kalamazoo uh, well in Kalamazoo I'm not saying it was the Kalamazoo company but there was supposed to Sears had supposed to build all the engines in Kalamazoo Michigan so I started doing some research I wanted to see through newspaper.com uh, I subscribed to it so I'm able to look at the, the old newspapers I did a lot of research to try to find out if there was a company in Kalamazoo that made steam engines and I can't find any now there is com there is a company called uh, Kalamazoo boiler company that made my little boiler in there that came with the red four horse engine well while I was searching of course and searching Sears and Roebuck and searching just individuals for uh, or companies for steam engines in Kalamazoo I came across uh, quite a bit of information about Sears versus United States Postal Service and the federal government because it seems that Sears was selling a lot of stuff and claiming it came from a factory that they owned and they never owned. So uh, I can't. I think a lot of it was jewelry, rings, and stuff like that. And it turns out that uh, they wasn't what they said they were first and second. They wasn't made where they said they were made at and because it was uh, through the Postal Service, because this was a mail order company, it became a federal matter. And the government got involved. And in my personal opinion, from my research and from what I've found, I think these engines were made by all different companies all over the United States, shipped probably to Kalamazoo, and actually made it up with a boiler from the Kalamazoo Boiler Company and then shipped out to the owners or to the buyers. I don't think that these were made by any one company like they claim. Uh, I think that uh, Sears was, you know, doing what they thought they had to do to to get the business and, and make the money. And because, you know, it was only mail order originally. So, and that's Sears Roebuck and Company is what, what it was going by. Not just Sears, not Sears and Roebuck. It was Sears, Roebuck and Company. So uh, anyway, interesting history on it. Uh, they got you know in some deep water uh, because of uh, you know sort of telling tales out of school. So all right, anyway, I thought you might find that interesting. Uh, but 
again, it comes back to these engines. I think they were built from different places. I think if your measurements match up as a Sears, then it was probably sold through Sears, but I doubt it was made through Sears. Uh, I really think that these engines was made all over the country by all different manufacturers. And that's just the way it is. All right. Okay. So all the bearing caps, the journals, everything's cleaned up, put back together. Uh, I have actually oiled everything and I have not tightened them tight. And what our plans are here is I'm going to turn this with that uh, little diesel engine for a while and let it break in. And that way we'll check the shim on it and then if we need to shim it, we'll shim it. That'll give me a chance to clean up that pulley, clean up the eccentric, clean up the uh, belt pulley for the uh, governor. And it should clean itself on that one a little bit anyway. And uh, we've just got the crosshead here so we don't have the rod hooked up or the uh, We've got the rod, but not the piston rod. Uh, we've just got the uh, rod going up to the crosshead. So uh, we'll adjust everything, get everything like we want it here, and then uh, we'll be done with this part, except maybe cleaning it up and painting it. Like I said, I hadn't decided. We're not going to tear it apart and paint it, but we may have cleaned it up and paint it. I don't know. So it's not a, that big of an issue. Uh, depends a lot on my wife if she wants to mess with it or not. And... Uh, like I said, I haven't done anything on this yet. I'll probably take the cylinder off and uh, so we can really get it cleaned out good and stuff because it's pretty rough. Put my rod bolt back in. Uh, I have taken all the, well, we got a little hard to see, but we've got uh, that one. Let's see. We got an oiler right here and I've cleaned them out good and actually made sure there was oil in them. We've got oil in our rods or in our main cap. So let's give her a try here. See if I can get that Mercedes diesel over here for the flat belt. All right. is really really quiet uh, everything's good and tight on it of course the rings were shot but uh, they must have kept oil on the outside and wasn't running steam oil or something I don't quite know but we messaged about some rings I don't know anything yet but we'll get some on the way either way I've got a company that can make them uh, that I know for sure it's kind of expensive but I want to try to give another company a chance first because they're right much cheaper, but I'm going to do whatever I've got to do. Uh, so, like I said, we're going to get that cylinder off. It shouldn't be too bad. Looks like the bolts are above it, so we'll have to get this cover off completely. We'll probably tear it up, of course. But. So all the bolts are above it, except for the one that's there, because the, uh, the valve chest or steam chest. So, uh, looks real good. We'll run out here a little while longer and I'll turn the camera back on and show you what the pulleys look like. Uh, I was running the wire wheel on them while they were running. And uh, just trying to clean it up. And get it broke in real good. I think it's going to be a good engine though. I think it's going to be a nice, quiet, good running engine. Yeah. Uh, Alright. Alright, looking good. Uh, Cleaned up quite a bit. Still got a lot to do, but uh, not bad at all. Got a lot of that rust off. Actually done the uh, counterweights on the crankshaft too. So I was hoping to find some color on this thing. And uh, she's rolling over a lot easier as you can see with one hand. And I'm looking and all I'm seeing is almost like a, 
uh, maybe a grayish blue like my Schofield engine so maybe we'll do that you know we got a green upright and a red upright we just will have a bluish gray upright too so besides that I don't see any I don't see any paint yet maybe a little silver around there I don't like that silver like that though. I would much rather have a uh, solid color or like a uh, you know an off shade of blue or something sort of like the antique colors too but uh, I will probably I don't know like I said I'm probably gonna go back with steel on that but we've got to take that off anyway and hope we got heads left on the bolts and you know if we do we'll, we'll work with them <laughs> well even if we don't we'll work with them but we'll get them out you know the bolts stuff don't stick like you would think it would be you know you, you don't think you would think that bolts like this you need to take a torch actually you take a wrench you loosen it and then you just back them out with your fingers got a lot of cleaning to do on that base too but i did get the eccentrics clean and the belt drive now i've got to find a governor for this unfortunately governors have went outrageous and when i say outrageous you know sometimes you can buy a steam engine cheaper than you can buy a governor okay folks so here's what we've got hopefully you can see that uh, i had to cut the cover part of the way i couldn't get it to come up out we'll figure that out later i mean it was rusted over here anyway so it really didn't matter but the heads of the bolts don't look too bad let's see if we can figure out how to get that cover out of there if not we'll just fake it and go around it somehow anyway i think they'll come out we'll go ahead and get them out and get that cylinder off there all right all right folks got it loose but i'm kind of scared he's awfully heavy i think i'm gonna take the forklift and get it off i'm afraid that once uh <laughs> i take the load of it it's gonna either hurt my back or go to the floor or go to the ground i don't want to do that so anyway We'll get her off there and we'll look her over again. All right, folks, cylinder's off. Uh, decided after hitting it with the wire brush that we're definitely going to machine it. Uh, we've got some pitting and stuff. So uh, we'll have to get this set up on the mill, which shouldn't be too terrible. Uh, I think we can handle it. And then uh, we'll get it mounted down and see if we can get that machined and uh, get everything cleaned up. We're gonna, we'll hone it out. I've got a hone that'll do seven inches luckily still don't have any rings on the way the company that i got a hold of hasn't messaged me back so i'm going to call the other one it's a little bit more expensive but i'll go ahead and get get something on the way sometimes you know the the time deal and we'll get some rope seal to pack both of them and uh when we redo it and like i said i've got to get a rod together i don't think i'm going to weld that rod and and turn it i'd rather just replace it so uh, now on the valve rod, you know, we don't have a choice. It was just too bad shape. So anyway, let me, uh, we'll get started probably. I'll probably go ahead and do the, uh, the D-cup valve first, get it cleaned up, and here it is. Get it all cleaned up, and then get it, you can see uh, mud daubers in there. But uh, resurface it. And... Uh, you can see where it's for. Uh, someone finally, when I took it apart, it had a washer on it, but evidently they ran it without a washer for quite a while and it knocked the nut up in there, but that's okay. We can work with it. It's not a, not a big issue there. Now this is slotted because this valve is sort of floating in here. You don't tighten it up tight against each other. It's got to float because uh, the pressure on the backside, that round section, is what pushes this against the you know the surface inside to make it seal so basically uh, you know steam works works by sealing itself and it's constantly pushing in on it because there's pressure inside of the steam chest and then as it goes up and down you know it just slides smooth and uh, a balance valve would have a spring behind it and you know they they work a little better but this this will be fine It'll uh, work out really well, but we'll get it cleaned up. Go and get the machining on it and doing whatever we're going to do. Uh, and I don't know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tempted to weld that up uh, just to see how good, good of a job we could do of, of doing it. See if it would stay straight. I don't know. 
who knows we might do something have to sandblast it first and then maybe weld it I don't know then again we would have to worry about it you know keeping oil on it all the time and not letting it get rusty and the good thing about a, a chrome rod we'll have to see what hydraulic cylinder I got if I got something I can you know sort of steal from a hydraulic cylinder and that's a little longer and uh, just cut the threads on it be done with it but uh, that's inch and a quarter so it shouldn't be too hard to find all right let me get at it all right folks following day and got the cylinder off i've got a set of rings on the way i did get that taken care of and then uh we've got to order a rod i'm gonna do that today and we'll have everything here to get this thing completed and finished up uh, i've got another little project we're gonna do here in a little bit i'll show you all right so i bought these pans these are uh, drip pans and they're not steel like i wanted but I couldn't find anything the right size, so we're going to live with them. I'm going to drill this and uh, mount it right through the plastic, and that way any oil, grease, you know, water, whatever, will leak in our pan here. And then uh, maybe we'll uh, just get it where we can wipe it out, clean it out. We'll do something, but that'll keep it off my concrete. And we're going to do this one too. Be a little bit more of a pain to get it under that one, but we'll get her. All right, all right, folks, uh, got this one done. Drilled it, bolted it, used half inch. Uh, I don't know what you call them, redheads or something like that. But anyway, it's not moving. And then we got our pan there, so we don't have to worry about it leaking oil or dripping oil everywhere. Now the exhaust is going to get run outside. I've got a uh, heat exchanger. I'm going to run the exhaust through to preheat it, uh, to preheat the water around it. You know, the exhaust won't mix with the water that's in it, but it will preheat it through the tubes and that'll give me water to pump into that with a steam pump. So I've got my own steam pump trying to get, but uh, anyway, so uh, I have twisted the belt to reverse the direction because, and I may not, I may change that back, but that way it'll turn down this way. Uh, I'm going to make the tool holder that goes on this and then we're going to have to get this back round like it should be because it's it's pretty off we'll know more when we run it but it's it's off pretty good most of them are but uh they don't ever get lapped in or whatever you want to call it but we're gonna we're gonna take care of that problem so we've got this engine up i actually hooked the uh come along up and raised it up and put this pan under it so we're gonna get a uh get this one lagged down also and this is six inch concrete so i'm using you know pretty long lags and like I said, they won't go, won't go anywhere. Won't have any issues with them. So this is where this one's going to sit permanent. And I don't know if we're going to put anything there. Maybe a rocking chair to sit in. I don't know if I'm going to fire today or not, but I'd love to see if that worked out okay. Uh, the bearings are about going in this, so I'll be rebounding it soon. But I figured for now we'll we'll be okay. And I may make bushings for it, uh, bronze bushings or something. And put in it we'll see what it looks like all right all right folks this one's mounted down so we're done with that uh don't have to worry about it moving i got room right there to put my uh ice cream maker and that'll work out really well so that's that all right okay so i'm working on removing the piston from the rod and i went out i've got a semi trailer out back that i had bought a pallet of cylinders one time and this cylinder just happened to be in there and it had caps on it's got fluid in it but there's our 18 inch perfect shape uh chrome plated cylinder uh well rod that we're going to use for a connecting rod so i'm going to get this thing apart get to get it out get the gland off it or the piston off it get it out of the gland get the piston off of it and then we'll uh probably have to cut it because it's, it's long of course and then we'll uh start threading this thing on the lathe and I think it's seven threads per inch is what we're going for. So, yeah, that's perfect. Uh, no problems at all. And that'll, I looked at these, a piece of this 24 inches long was what I was going to have to get because they made them 18, but 18 is just a little tiny bit short. But a 24 inch piece was going to cost me, you know, 80 bucks or so. So this cylinder here, it, good cylinder, but there's a couple of things. I'm not, I'm not too into tie rod cylinders. I uh, just have never never liked them too well first and second uh i just don't need it i mean you know it's been in that trailer for for years and years so it's time to use it even if we got to take it apart and just use part of it all right 